Hello friends, I welcome you in my video. Today's topic is external commercial borrowing. In this video, we are going to cover the applicable guidelines and direction issued by RBI. So let us first talk about what is ECB. So ECBs are commercial loans or borrowing or trade credit beyond three years availed by eligible resident Indians means the borrower and these are availed from recognized non-resident entities means the lenders. Such loans or borrowing should confirm to the parameter prescribed by RBI that is all in cost, minimum average maturity, permitted end use etc. The parameters to apply in totality and not on standalone basis. So basically it's a commercial loan availed by resident entities from non-resident lenders and there are certain you know parameter which are supposed to be complied by the borrower okay then benefits of ecb so first of all it's a cheaper source of finance because the rate of interest is lower compared to domestically raised rupee loan Second is it, it is a regulated framework and clear guidelines by RBI and cheap funding from foreign equity holder. So, uh, you know, in case of uh, there is foreign equity holder, so the same or the foreign equity holder is also one of the recognized uh, lender for ECB. So, if equity holder itself is giving loan, then definitely it will come at cheaper cost. Now, for borrowing, the borrower having forex earning can further reduce interest cost. It means if uh, the, any entity uh, they are availing the ECB and if they are having the you know natural hazards or forex earning, then they are not supposed to uh, you know uh, incur the forward cost. In that case, there will be definitely reduction in the interest cost. Then large volume of funds can be raised. So the limit is 750 million per financial year, uh, which can be raised by the resident entities under the ECB route. Then funds are available for longer terms. Then borrowing are allowed in any freely convertible foreign currency and INR. The challenges of ECB. Now let's discuss one by one. First of all, exchange risk in, is involved because definitely if uh, the borrower does not have any you know uh, in the forex earning then uh, they are supposed to has the uh, this risk but still if they are uh, taking uh, the forward cover also but uh, in intermediation period there can be some uh, foreign risk involved exchange rate is risk then framework is tightly regulated by, by rbi so it is not that anyone can go and take the ecb there are certain parameters uh, the criteria are given which are you know complied by the borrower any changes in the terms and condition require ad bank approval so friends there are three parties involved in uh, you know bor uh, this borrowing we can say four party first of all the borrower second is lender third is ad bank through which the formalities are completed and fourth one is rbi so it is not only between the borrower and the lender but there is AD bank is also involved in RBI. So AD bank is nothing but a bank which is authorized to deal in foreign exchange. And for the purpose of ECB, the AD bank is the bank who completes all the formality with respect to getting the loan registration number and reporting on behalf of the borrower. Then any deviation in prescribed parameter requires RBI approval, not available for short duration late submission fees for non-compliance of reporting so if any delay is there or not or not reporting is there then in case the late submission fees will be applicable to the borrower not available to the individual borrowers so it is only for the corporate or llps then hedging costs involved if not necessarily has so we have already mentioned that uh, definitely if there is no foreign or uh, forex earning for the borrower then in that case they are supposed to has these currency risk for the ecb then eligible borrowers so there are two types of ecb first is foreign currency denominated ecb and second is inr denominated ecb 
so in case of foreign currency denominated ecb the eligible borrowers are all entities eligible to receive fdi so basically all companies and llp and further the following entities are also eligible to raise ecb so these are the post trust units in scz sidb and exim bank of india and for inr denominated ecb all entities those who are eligible to raise foreign currency ecb but additionally the registered entities engaged in microfinance with registered not for profit uh, companies registered society trust and ngo so they can this category of uh, you know uh, the entities they can raise the inr denominated ecb then eligible lenders so friends as uh, i have already mentioned that the ecb framework is tightly regulated by rbi so there are defined eligible borrower defined eligible lenders so let us understand who are the eligible lender so first is any lenders or bank financial institution outside india okay so the outside india is important so any category of these institution if they are outside india they can extend the ecb the lender should be a resident of fatf or iosco compliant country so this is another condition which are attached to the eligible lender then other than first category then multilateral or regional financial institution where india is a member country so like uh, you know adb or other such kind of international uh, this multilateral agency they can also extend the ecb then individual lenders so only in case of foreign equity holder or subscription to bond or debenture listed abroad so suppose any individual who is a foreign who is a equity holder in the resident entity in india and and he, or he can subscribe ml he is holding the equity through this bond or debenture he can also uh, you know he can also lend the ecb and he is a uh, you know eligible lender then foreign branches subsidiaries of indian bank so we are aware that our indian bank they are having subsidiary or foreign branches so they are also you know categorized or recognized as eligible lender for ecb in the last slide we have talked about the eligible lender and as we have seen that overseas branches and uh, subsidiaries of indian bank are one of the recognized lender so but there are certain restriction which are there on such kind of uh, you know lender so what are those restriction these are they can only lend foreign currency ecb so such lender they cannot uh, lend in inr denominated ecb and when they are you know lending in foreign currency ecb they cannot subscribe this foreign currency convertible bond or foreign currency exchangeable bond okay so on only in foreign currency ecb and that is also other than foreign currency convertible bond and foreign currency exchangeable bond further the foreign branch or subsidiary of indian bank subject to prudential norm can participate as arrender arranger underwriters market makers traders for rupee rupee denominated bonds issued overseas further under underwriting by foreign branch subsidiary of indian bank for issuance by indian bank will not be allowed okay so there this is a restriction then further they cannot give the ecb for working capital to generate corporate purpose then repayment of rupee loan for capex or non capex and they cannot also lend you know ecb for startup then lastly they cannot give ecb for npa or sma to rupee loans for which the repayment is supposed to be done or any loan which is under corporate insolvency resolution process so these are the restriction imposed on overseas branches or subsidiaries of indian bank options under ecb framework two types of ecbs and under the framework that is foreign currency denominated ecb and indian rupee denominated ecb so these are two kind of framework then further there are two routes of ecb that is automatic route and approval route 
so automatic route is R, uh, the route or the ecb where approval of rba is not required and in case of uh, approval route the ecb's loan which are required rba approval are under approval route then limit and leverage so the total limit which is given for raising the ecb is usd 750 million per financial year and it was temporarily increased to usd 1.5 billion till december 31st 2022 to give push or boost the forex reserve okay then the ecb loan to equity ratio the foreign equity holder not to exceed 7 is to 1 so in case if the ecb is through foreign equity holder then there is a applicability of ecb loan to equity ratio and that should not exceed 7 is to 1 then important terms or concepts so after having the understanding of some you know basic uh, you know framework now we can discuss about the key important terms so first is all in cost so all in cost means the cost which the borrower is incurring for raising the ecb so what does it mean it includes interest cost other charges in connection with ecb commissions paid in both INR as well as foreign currency but does not does not include commitment fees and withholding taxes okay then ecb liability or equity ratio it means ecb outstanding other than inr ecb okay divided by paid up equity capital plus free reserve it means the net worth then fatf compliant country so the lender must be the member of fatf or fatf style regional bodies uh, you know members then foreign currency convertible bond so these are the bond instrument issued by indian entity in foreign currency then foreign currency exchangeable bond because these are the instrument of ecb so we need to have the understanding of what are the foreign currency convertible bond and what is the foreign currency exchangeable bond so foreign currency exchangeable bonds are the bond which are exchangeable with the shares of any other company so friends i'll tell you what happens in foreign currency exchangeable bond so suppose there is a a company which is issuing the foreign currency exchangeable bond but on the due date on the maturity the shares of some other company or group company will be offered as the you know uh, instru instrument for the uh, this uh, so, uh, to the lender who have uh, uh, subscribed the foreign exchange foreign currency exchangeable bond so this is the uh, you know uh, modalities of foreign currency exchangeable bond then foreign equity holder so as we have already seen that foreign equity holder is also as one of the recognized lender so what is the foreign equity holder it is the uh, person who's who is holding uh, equity not less than 25 percent directly or indirect equity holding not less than 51 percent or the group company with common overseas parent are treated as the foreign equity holders then infrastructure sector so sector specified in the gazette or as amended from time to time by government of india the certain categories are exploration mining refineries are also covered for ecb purpose then infrastructure infrastructure space company companies in infrastructure sector holding company core investment company nvfcs in infra financing a housing finance company nsb or port trust so these are covered under infrastructure space company then iosco compliant country a company whose security market uh, regulator uh, in case of india it is sebi okay so is signatory of iosco that is multi uh, iosco's multi red memorandum of understanding so this is the condition for the eligible lenders okay then further uh, we need to understand the real estate activity any real estate activity involving own or leased property for buying selling or renting of commercial and residential property or land and also include activities either on a fees or contract basis 
assigning real estate agent for intermediating in buying, selling, letting or managing real estate. However, this would not include number one, construction or development of industrial parks, integrated township or SEZ. Second, purchasing long term leasing of industrial land as part of new project modernization of expansion of existing units and third is any activity under infrastructure sector definition so friends since the real estate activities is given under the negative list of ecb for which you cannot raise the ecb but the exception given that however this would not include construction development of industrial park integrated townships so, the you know the category mentioned in the blue uh, ink it, these are not classified as real estate activities so you can give you can consider the ecb for this kind of category okay then designated authorized dealer category branch so it is the bank who is basically you know acting as a ad bank for uh you know completing the all the formalities and reporting requirement on behalf of the borrower with the reserve bank okay then end use negative list so as we know that a negative rate list means ecb are permitted for any category of purpose except this category okay so ECB both INR and ECB denominated, denominated ECB cannot be utilized. Okay, so uh, there is a typo error little, but uh, in INR or both in foreign currency denominated ECB, it cannot be utilized for the following purpose. Number one, real estate activities, investment in capital market, equity investment, then working capital or general corporate purpose, Exception for the specific lender we will see in the coming slide. Repayment of rupee loans, exceptions are there. We will see in the coming slide that on lending by NVFC to the entities for the above activities, exceptions are also given. Okay, so basically uh, the real estate activities, investment in capital market, equity investment, and the working capital or general corporate purpose, repayment of rupee loans, and on lending by NVFC. We will see these last three category in the coming slide but major majorly this is the negative list for end use of ecb so ecb cannot be raised for this category of end use then the the most important concept of minimum average maturity for ecb that is weighted average maturity so uh, you know as per the minimum average maturity uh, there is a condition there are condition given uh, in which scenario how much minimum average maturity is required so first of all the first category is it's a general minimum average maturity of three years okay so before uh, going into further this uh, you know details we can uh, understand what is the minimum average maturity so basically it is the weighted average maturity and the formula is ecb loan out loan outstanding multiplied by number of days for which the loan is outstanding divided by the ecb loan amount that is the total ecb loan amount outstanding and multiplied by 360 days so whatever the product or the figure or resultant figure will arrive that we will call it as minimum average maturity okay so first uh, category is the borrower in case of three years minimum average maturity so the borrower is any eligible borrower then amount is usd 750 million per financial year the purpose is any permitted use end use there should not be negative end use then lenders category any recognized lender and restriction for overseas branch or subsidiary of indian bank no restriction so this is the general guideline for the ecb but if the ECB is not uh, the min the minimum average maturity period is not uh, three years. Then there are other categories which are also considered under automatic route. Okay, so next category is one year. So it means your average maturity period period can be one year, but 
your borrower can be only manufacturing company okay amount would be up to us dollar 50 million per financial year and per purpose any permitted end use and lenders category any recognized lender okay and restriction uh, on indian overseas man no restriction so they can also be a lender for such category of ecb then next category of mamp is 5 years that is 5 years so again the borrower any eligible borrower here the amount can be raised up to 750 million per financial year and the purpose is working capital purpose general corporate purpose or for the repayment of rupee loan okay but the lender category is the foreign equity holders only okay so in case of foreign equity holder the, your average uh, the minimum average maturity period can be of 5 years but the indian uh, overseas branch or subsidiaries of indian bank they cannot lend ecb under this category okay the third category then mamp of 7 years so again who are the eligible borrower any eligible borrower we have already seen the amount 750 million per financial year and the purpose is repayment of rupee loans availed domestically for capital expenditure or on lending by nbfc for the same purpose okay then lenders category any recognized lender then restriction for indian uh, overseas branches or subsidiary yes they cannot be lender for such kind of minimum average maturity okay then 10 years so a minimum average maturity of 10 years okay so any eligible borrower amount is same and the purpose general uh, working capital purpose corporate purpose and on lending by nbfcs repayment of rupee loan availed domestically for capex on lending by nbfc for the same and lenders category is any recognized lender but again here the restriction is given for the overseas branch or indian subsidiary of indian banks or over uh, the subsidiaries of indian bank they cannot lend for this uh, average maturity period okay now let us have a look on practical example of calculation of minimum average maturity period okay that is mamp so first column is your number of installments 1 2 3 4 5 then next column is your date for drawal or repayment then opening balance of ecb then drawal and repayment and next is your balance outstanding so that is f equal to c plus d minus e then the number of days so number of days we will calculate by you know uh, uh, difference between the two dates so the first period is coming as 13 days then we will have the product of number of days and the balance and we can divide the same by uh, 360 days because it's a foreign currency so in the international market uh, we take always 360 days as the number of days uh, in a year okay so likewise we will calculate the product for uh, till all the installment then we will have a final figure of uh, the product that is 95 lakh 91314.69 and if we divide this figure by the total amount of ecb which is 28 lakh 64780.47 then we will get the figure of 3.35 as our minimum maturity period so friends this is the example of uh, you know calculating the minimum average maturity period so uh, you can refer this calculation whenever you are having any proposal in your hand then ecb important requirement okay other requirement is your uh, currency of borrowing for foreign currency denominated any freely convertible foreign currency and inr denominated it is in inr then hazing requirement the entities raising ecbs are required to follow the guidelines for hazing hedging issued and any by the concerned sectoral prudential regulator in respect of foreign currency exposure and the same thing is also there overseas investor are eligible to you know has their exposure in rupee through permitted derivative product with ad category banks in india so what happens in case of inr denominated ecb your lenders are there in the 
overseas uh, territory so they are permitted to has their exposure with ad category banks in india as per the permitted derivative instrument okay then forms of ecb so uh, there can be uh, a different form of ecb so in case of foreign currency denominated ecb these are the loans first is loans including bank loan then floating fixed rate notes bond debenture other than fully and compulsory convertible debenture friend here you can understand the exception is given for the fully and compulsory convertible debenture because these in instrument uh, you know uh, are you know uh, as a uh, is there your equity will be converted and they will come into the foreign direct investment route okay so the loan will become your equity so that's why these two uh, instruments are you know uh, are put under the exceptional uh, category then trade credit beyond 3 years and fccbs fcevs and financial deals so in case of foreign currency denominated ecb such kind of loan can be considered considered under ecb for inr category the loans including bank loan floating rate note bond debenture preference share but other than those two that fully and compulsory convertible instrument whether it is preference share equity uh, that bond anything if it is compulsory convertible then it is uh, out of purview of uh, you know ecb then trade credit beyond 3 years and financial year also plain vanilla rupee denominated bond issued overseas which can be either placed privately listed or on exchange as per the host country regulation so basically these are the bond you can call them as masala bond okay then all in cost ceiling so uh, we have already uh, discussed the meaning of all in cost but uh, as per the ecb framework the ceiling is given that benchmark rate plus 550 basis spread for existing ecbs linked to libor whose benchmark are change to alternative reference rate and for the new ecb the benchmark rate plus 500 basis point and in case of rupee denominated ecb the same is uh, your benchmark rate plus 450 basis spread so this is uh, the forms of ecb and all in cost ceiling then exchange rate in case of foreign currency denominated ecb exchange of currency can be done at a exchange rate prevailing on the date of the agreement for such changes between the parties concerned or at the exchange rate which is less than the rate prevailing on the date of the agreement if considered to by the ecb lender so this is basically uh, exchange rate where uh, the amount is converted in other currency okay and for uh, inr case for conversion to rupee the exchange rate shall be the rate prevailing on the date of settlement okay so suppose if you have to make the payment or you convert the ecb but uh, since it is raised in inr so uh, the rate would be the rate at the prevailing on the date of settlement then change of currency of borrowing so in case of foreign currency denominated uh, ecb the change of currency is permitted from one freely convertible currency to another freely convertible currency as well as is in inr this is permitted but in case of uh, inr denominated ecb the conversion is not allowed procedure for raising the ecb so as we have already uh, you know seen in the last slide there are two route so one is automatic route and second is approval route so all ecbs can be raised under automatic route if they conform to the parameters prescribed under this frame framework entity desires to raise ecb under the automatic route may approach an ad category bank with their proposal along with duly filed form ecb so in automatic route if the customer or if the borrower they are satisfying all the parameter they can simply fill the form ecb and they can approach to their at bank for getting the lrn number that is a loan registration number but if there are any deviation or it is beyond the ceiling limit then it will the proposal will be considered under automatic sorry under or approval route 
and for this the borrower to approach RBI through AD Bank. So the uh, the borrower they cannot directly approach RBI for approval. They have to you know route their request through AD Bank. The required details to be given in form ECB. RBI will examine the proposal based on the applicable guideline, macroeconomic situation, merits of the proposal. Beyond threshold limit, proposal will be examined by empowered group consisting internal as well as external member. So the empowered group is basically the group in RBI and uh, there they, they will have member uh, from internal as well as outside agency. Okay, so uh, these are the two, uh, two routes available for raising the ECB and this is the procedure. Then, you know, uh, the loan registration number is very important uh, uh, thing in ECB because uh, as per uh, the relevance is with effect from 2004, RRI is to be quoted on all the communication with AD Bank or RBI for reporting requirement. And second is uh, there is no uh, provision that we, uh, the borrower can avail the loan without having the LRN. So LRN is the must. So any disbursement to happen only after obtaining the LRN from Reserve Bank. To obtain the LRN, borrower is required to submit form ECB along with the terms and condition of ECB in duplicate to AD Bank. The AD Bank will forward one copy to Director Reserve Bank of India, Department of Statistics and Information Management, External Commercial Borrowing Division, Bandra Kulda Complex, Mumbai 400-0051 and the copies of loan agreement is not required. Post examination of form ECB, RBI may allot LRN number to the ECB loan. Okay, so this is the procedure. You need to simply approach to your AD bank along with the form ECB, duly filled, duly certified, and your AD bank will approach to RBI bank. They will submit the required document, and if RBI found everything, if RBI find everything is in order, they will allot you the loan registration number. Only after the allotment of registration number, this loan registration number, the disbursement can happen in ECB. Then reporting requirement. Borrower to report actual ECB transaction on monthly basis in form ECB2. So the form ECB2 is uh, the form through which the monthly reporting is to be done. The reporting is to be done within seven days from the close of the uh, relevant month. Changes, if any, ECB parameters should also be incorporated in form ECB2. Full particles, full particles of the transaction to be given. ECB2 is to be signed by the borrower along with the certification from a chartered accountant. AD Bank will also sign the form ECB2 before submission to RBI. Then late submission fees is applicable if there is a delay in reporting submission of the form ECB2. Then uh, we have already seen the late submission fee. So here uh, on September 30th, 2022, the RBI has issued a circular through which a common late submission fees for ODI, FDI and ECB. They have, uh, you know, uh, they have defined the common uh, structure for uh, calculation of late submission fees. So the briefly it is covered that uh, in case of this uh, F, uh, ODI, Part 2, APR, FCGPR uh, or FLA returns and other that is 7,500 per reporting and in case of like uh, form ECB, ECB2, there is a amount based, uh, amount based late submission fee. So the formula would be your 7,500 plus 0.025% of A. A is your amount involved or amount of ECB and N is the your number of uh, days, number of days on uh, the period. So here the, your period is considered as full month. Okay. <clears throat> and powers delegated to category A bank. So there, uh, as we have already seen that in case of ECB, uh, here there are four parties. One is RBI, second is uh, your borrower, third is lender and fourth is AD bank. So there are certain powers uh, are given to AD Bank to deal with the ECB related matters. So first one is change of AD category one bank. So borrower can change the AD Bank, but NOC is required from the existing AD Bank. Then for cancellation of uh, LRN, uh, uh, the duly formed 
is to be filled up and submitted to RBI along with the necessary details and for cancellation of uh, LRN number. Then refinancing of existing ECB. So if uh, any restructuring or refinance proposal is there that the same can also be done through AD bank. Then conversion of ECB into equity. So uh, it is allowed but uh, uh, we need to keep in mind when uh, the ECB is, con is getting converted into equity then there will be another uh, you know la lag that is the FDI lag. So for amount the conversion amount which is converted into equity the form FCGPR is required to be filed and for the balance amount the form ECB 2 is required, two is required to file with RBI. Then security for raising the ECB. So the creation of charge on the movable assets of the borrower, then creation of charge on the immobile property, then creation of charge for over financial security or issue of corporate guarantee or personal guarantee. So these are these securities are allowed for raising the ECB. It means the security can be created in favor of overseas lender. Then special dispensation. So th these are the category where the dispensation means their exceptions are given. So for ECB facility for oil marketing companies. So the minimum average maturity period is three years and limit is up to USD 10 billion or equivalent per financial year. Okay. So other category, the limit is USD 7.750 million per financial year. But for oil marketing companies, the limit is up to USD 10 billion or equivalent per financial year. Then in case of uh, startup, the, these are the broad guidelines. Eligibility, any entity recognized as startup by central government as on the date of raising ECB. Recognized lender, lenders, investor from FATF country, foreign subsidiaries, branches or of Indian bank. Okay, but they are not, uh, you know, allowed to give the land ECB to the startups. Okay, that we have already seen. Then minimum average maturity period will be three years forms loan loan. Uh, there can be forms of uh, various forms of ECB like loan non -convert convertible partial convertible or optional convert convertible preferential currency both in uh, foreign currency as well as INR or combination of both or amount amount is uh, USD 3 million or equivalent per financial year. So for startup the amount is up to 3 million. All in cost as per the mutual agreed terms and use any expenditure in connection with the business of the borrower but it should not be it should not be in the negative end use then ecb under restructuring plan okay so ecb can be raised or entity can raise the ecb if it is permitted under resolution plan so if any entity is under stress and there is a restructuring and uh, in the restructuring plan the ECB is there then such entity can raise the ECB. Then repayment of NP or SMA two rupee loans infrastructure both infrastructure or capex by way of freeze fresh ECB is allowed as OTS proposal. So in case of uh, NP loan as well as SMA two rupee loans which is given for infrastructure or capex capex if they have this can be done by way of uh, you know raising the fresh ecb okay then lenders are also eligible to sell assign such loans to eligible ecb lenders subject to compliance of applicable norms so the lenders um, those who are having the you know np or sma2 uh, uh, loans or ecb they can assign to other lenders but subject to compliance of uh, that uh, the norms mentioned in the ecb guidelines then foreign branch overseas a subsidiary of Indian bank cannot lend for repayment of NPA or SMA to rupee loan. So that we have already seen in the, in the restriction part, the applicable MAMP will have to be strictly complied with under all some sub circumstances. It means the minimum average maturity period, uh, you know, even though the restructuring or refinancing that condition has to be complied in all the cases. Then SOP for untraceable entities. Friends, this is very important thing because, uh, you know, once the ECB raised them, sometimes the borrower is not traceable and, uh, you know, they are not, re not reporting. In fact, uh, the, the banks, they are searching the, such customer 
but they are not uh, able to contact them so rbi is given the sop to be followed in such scenario so sop sop for the entities who are not in compliance with ecb guideline including reporting for past eight or more quarters so the untraceable uh, entities would be fall under this category if they are not in compliance with ecb guideline including reporting for last past eight or more quarters okay so once this condition is satisfied then the sop will be applicable so untraceable entities means the entity itself auditor their auditor their director promoters of entity are not traceable or reachable responsive reply in negative over emails letters phone for a period not less than two quarters with documented communication reminder numbering six or more and not found operating at the registered office and not submitted statutory audit certificate for last two years so these are the categories of you know untraceable so it is not only the entity even though the auditor director promoters they are not traceable they are not replying they are not cooperating and for and the for two consecutive quarter and with a number of reminder is six or more and they are not found operative at the registered of office and they are not submitting the statutory audits auditor certificate for last two years then they are treated as untraceable entity so further in the, the sop to be followed is as under file revised ecb form that is form ecb and ecb2 form marked as untraceable entity okay then no fresh ecb application by the entity to be entertain so if in such case is the same uh, the borrower or customer is approaching for another ec then ad bank will not entertain such kind of application then ad bank is also supposed to inform the directorate of enforcement uh, for such kind of untraceable ecb and no involved or debt servicing will be permitted for such kind of untraceable entities so friend this is very important think please take into consideration then uh, the miscellaneous provision the borrowing by entities under investigation so yes ecb is permitted by the this such kind of category but uh, there should be you know noc uh, from such investigative uh, agencies or uh, from the uh, the agency or court uh, uh, as part of the normal procedure that then dissemination of information so the the borrower is supposed to uh, you know give the form ecb2 for report, uh, reporting and rbi also uh, on their website they uh, you know publish the information for ecb uh, loans then compliance with the guidelines so ultimately it's a responsibility of the borrower concerned however the ad banks are also expected to ensure compliance with the e ecb guidelines by their constituents so friend with this i, I conclude my uh, video on this external commercial borrowing if you have any query you can mention in the uh, you know chat box or comment and i'll revert on the same thank you thank you very much thank you